<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? What is actually happening here? Michael Elise, uh, uh, this is escalating. This is escalating at the speed of light. Oh, man. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out. Literally breaking news about an hour, a couple of hours ago. Chelsea have offered less than 45 million euros, including bonuses, to sign Michael Elise. The player is seduced. The player is seduced. Chelsea really put on their, you know, nice outfit, a little bit of low cut, and really seduced Michael Elise. The player is seduced by the project and wants to go. I, I found this comment from Matisse absolutely apt. What the F is actually going on? <laughs> Look, we're going to get to the rest of the Michael Elise news. I just want to say... It, what is actually going on? Surely we can't get Mohamed Kudus, we can't get Ryan Shirky and Michael Elise. Don't forget, I've been beating the drums in regards to Angela Gabriel that I want to see till the end of the preseason because he's impressing a lot. We still haven't seen Nodia Madueke play on that right side in the preseason as yet. I mean, is there, there's probably need for one more. Um, sort of like a central attacking midfielder who can potentially play out in the wings, who can maybe even play as a false nine. There's probably a need for a player like that. That's why I understood the Mohamed Kudus, um, you know, links with Chelsea Football Club. Olise, for me, he's, he's a brilliant player. I've seen a lot of Olise in Crystal Palace. He's probably one of my most favourite players from Crystal Palace, along with, um, what's his name? Ize, um, yeah, Ize and, and Olise are probably the two standout like big players for me in, in Crystal Palace. Obviously, Wilfred Zaha is there. Wilfred Zaha, by, by the way, has gone to Galatasaray on a free transfer. I don't know what he's doing at Galatasaray, but it is what it is. Should have gone to Saudi. But coming back to Olise, he's a creative player. He's fast, young profile as well, 21 years old, can dribble. Um, I can definitely picture him playing on that right side, doing exactly what Angela Gabriel was doing, um, but obviously with the Premier League experience, um, which which counts a lot. But Olise, yeah, he loves to take his player on. Um, you know, he can he can definitely he can definitely put on some lovely crosses from the right side. He can definitely play on the on the on the left side as well because he's got a nice left foot. He's a set piece taker as well. So look, what is the plan? That's where I'm trying to understand this whole situation. There is no way, in my opinion, that we get Kudus, Olise, and Shirky. I think with the Ryan Shirky one, it, it is slowly cooling down. I think Leon really wants to keep Ryan Shirky. And they believe that he can he can have a solid season in the upcoming season. And they can potentially sell him for about 80, 90 million next season. So they, they do see... Uh, value in keeping him. They rather get rid of other youngsters to balance their books. With Mohamed Kudus, that made sense to me because he can play in multiple positions. Um, you know, whether it's a striker position, false nine, central attacking midfielder, or on the left side. So and that that particular player definitely made sense to me. And Elise, to a certain degree, absolutely makes sense to me. I think the reason you guys might be thinking, why, why then, why are we actually going for Elise? One of the biggest reasons, ladies and gentlemen is, I think, because of this. Um, well, the one after this. Chelsea have reached an agreement in principle with Michael Elise. Salary conditions are very attractive. Like, this is moving quick, and it's coming from Fabrice Hawkins. Fabrice Hawkins, as I told you guys a couple of days ago, when it comes to French players, French news, um, and Michael Elise, I think he plays for French under-21. Um, so I don't think he's English. I'm pretty certain Elise is not English. Michael Olise International Team. Are you sure he's French under 21? Uh, yeah, French, uh, France under 21. He is France under 21. So, um, but I think I think he's he's a Chelsea fan from from uh, young time. Uh, he could potentially. Some people were saying he could potentially be part of the. Uh, you know, homegrown quota because he's he's from the. I'm not really sure whether he's actually played at Chelsea, <clears throat> um, Chelsea Academy once upon a time. Um, I need to check up on that. But 
some people have been saying that he could potentially fit that criteria. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is moving rapidly. Like apparently uh, the agreement in principle uh, in terms of salary and whatnot has, has already been ad- agreed by by um, Marco Lalisa. He's very much attracted by this uh, by this project of Chelsea. Alisa is ready to join French teammates. Chelsea has a locker room which can make him adapt quickly. There you go. There you go. This is this is big. This is this is probably moving fast and it could potentially get done. And as I said, why do I think it can get done? Why do I think maybe this makes sense to a certain degree? It's because of this, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think anyone was aware of this. Marco Lelise release clause is around 35 million pounds. 35 million pounds. I don't understand why there are no more more clubs after him. I think Man City are interested in him because they've lost Riyad Mahrez. Man City's interest in Marco Lelise is strong. You'd think he'd probably choose Man City, you know, Pep Guardiola, but you never know, man. You never know. If we can sell him a project where we, we tell him that you're, you're going to be an important player and you're going to potentially get most of the minutes ahead of probably Noni Medueke or even uh, you know, Angelo Gabriel, um, then he could potentially come over here in Man City. Is, is most likely going to be a rotational piece. Uh, he's, I don't think he's going to start from the get-go. But then again, Man City are f- far more established at the moment in terms of their football, their philosophy, and Pep Guardiola being there for so long. So there is that. But ladies and gentlemen, you let me know. You let me know how you feel about Michael Olisa. I've always liked him, always liked him. And if it comes be- in, in, in the sense of out of the three, Kudus, Michael Olisa, or Ryan Shirky, I'd go for someone like Michael Elise, one 21 years old, creative winger who can potentially move into the central attacking positions. Um, and yeah, that Premier League experience that he has. So look, there is a concern in regards to his injuries, but hopefully he can get over it. Apparently, currently, he's just recovering from a hamstring injury as well. So how's he going to pass medical? Chelsea and Man City are keeping eye on Michael Elisa. He has a release clause, but the problem is he currently has an injury. Let's see what happens. This is coming from Fabrizio Romano. Um, Maurizio Pochettino is a big admirer of Michael Elisa and has already spoken to him with Elisa having agreed to join Chelsea if a deal can be reached. Uh, this is coming from Adrian Kajumba. There is some solid talks in regards to Marco Lelisa, I don't think this is a joke. Like I think Chelsea's are actually going for him. As I said, it fits the profile. Young player, lots of talent. It absolutely fits the profile. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know. But as I said, I don't think we are going to, out of the three, Kudus, Olise, and Shirky, I don't think we're going to get all three. No way we get all three. Um, someone actually commented a very smart comment in regards to this, said that, we are just keeping our options open. We don't want to be held ransom by any club that oh, you want, say, for example, Leon, or you want Ryan Shirk, you're not after anyone else. So you're going to have to pay 50, 60, whatever million, right? But now at least we can say, no, we're not We're not really stuck on one player. So if you're not willing to sell at a reasonable price, we'll move on to our next target, Kudus, or we'll move on to our next target, Olise. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know. Do you think it is possible to get all three? Um, I don't think so. Do you think it's just going to be one or two? And then what happens with Noni Medueke, uh, Angela Gabriel? Like, I, I don't want to. I don't want to give up on Angela Gabriel. He's he's been very impressive, extremely impressive. All right, let me know in the comment section. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, interesting could do from Chelsea in terms of calling people close to him. No bid to Ajax. So that's the situation with Kudus. I think once again the personal terms have been agreed. He is also keen on a move, but no bids with Ajax. I, I feel like this is far more. Far more tasty at the moment with Michael Elise at 35 million release clause is a huge play. So you know, getting a player for that level of money, oh, that's perfect. That's exactly how we're operating in this transfer window at the moment. Next up, check this out. All sorts of rumors about Colwell leaving Chelsea Football Club should be 100% demolished and disintegrated. Uh, Brighton, definitely, you can forget about this player and you can stop talking about this player as well. Breaking this came in post-match yesterday from from, uh, Maurizio Pochettino. Colwell is confirmed staying. Pochettino has told media he's our player and he's going to continue with us. He's a good player and did better than I expect. I am so happy with him and he can become one of the greatest centre-backs in England. I mean, that is... 
praise of the highest quality from Pochettino. And if that doesn't give comfort to Liwa Kowal, I don't know what else will. Liwa Kowal was sublime yesterday. Besides that giving away that penalty and that was rash, um, and that kind of stuff may happen here and there as long as it's not consistently happening. He's a young player. There, there will be mistakes and there should be rooms to make mistakes so that he can grow from that as well. But Lee Wakowa, some of his distributions from that from that deep, you know, in the, in the CB position, yeah, he's, for me, he's an attacking defender. He's an absolute attacking defender. He's a bit of a cheat code with his with his passing ability from deep. Um, so, yeah, Brighton can 100% forget about this. And anyone else, Liverpool, Brighton, anyone else, he's Chelsea player 100%. And hopefully he has a big, big future at Chelsea Football Club. Now, in regards to Moses Caicedo, talks are continuing between Chelsea and Brighton for Moses Caicedo. And Chelsea is expected to make a new offer soon. Brighton still value him at 100 million. The removal of Leo Akola from Caicedo equation will force Chelsea to significantly raise their offer if they are to convince Brighton to sell them. There was no Caicedo in offer at all. So I don't know what they're talking about, the removal. There was never, sorry, there was never Lee Y. Colwell, uh, removal of Lee Y. Colwell. There was never Colwell in the equation for this Caicedo transfer. So I'm not really sure what Sam Dean over here is saying. Um, it was always going to be about 80 million, 85 million for Caicedo. We're never going to reach 100 million. But let's see what happens. We, we still need to get this done. I still want this player. But as I said in recent times, since Roberto De Zerbi has been disrespecting us publicly, that if it's 100 million and they're not going to budge, so be it. So be it. Then we move on. Um, if, if it's about 80, 85 million plus with add-ons and they can agree on that, let's get that player. Um, because... Brighton has has mocked us and made fun of us way too much, and we need to start showing them who the boss is. Like, you know, they're, they're a small club; they need to understand that's your place. Don't try to redesign the ecosystem now. Chelsea co-owner back Derek Bally was in attendance at Lincoln Financial Field, as was co-sporting director Paul Winston Lee. There were no indications of further talks with the Brighton hierarchy to bridge the 30 million gap in the two clubs' valuation of. Moses Caicedo, and while the coming days will present more opportunities with the key negotiators in close proximity, this period also generates time pressure to make tangible progress on a key piece of business. Look, uh, this is coming from Liam Toomey. I'm happy to wait now. I, I really am. There was a time where I wanted this guy in immediately and, and partner up with Enzo Fernandez. But now I don't want to bend over backwards for Brighton. I'm well, willing to wait and play this out as long as it takes I hope we don't budge from our 80, 85 million bid, uh, which hopefully we'll make very, very soon. That Hopefully that is the final one. And then after that, let's just wait. All in. That's what we gi have given. If you agree, you agree. If not, well, deal with it. You know, keep the player for one more season and see what it, where the price goes next season. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. The player is disgruntled. The player wants to... This way, I think now... Caicedo and his agents, they really need to start pushing Brighton. They have to. They need to start saying, hey, enough's enough. I thought there was a promise in January because we wanted to go in January. And you said that we can go in summer. Now, a decent offer's coming, except they got to start putting the pressure on Brighton. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Callum Antonadoy is keen to leave Chelsea as soon as possible and has agreed personal terms with Fulham. Chelsea have been trying to drive up the price and have invited Lazio into the race. This is from Nizar Kinsella. I saw earlier on today that the, the um, link with Lazio was quite strong as well. And, and the reason why the Fulham one wasn't moving is because Marco Silva's um, future at, at, at Fulham was, was up in the air because there is an offer from Saudi Arabia. So now it seems like Fulham is back into the race. Look, whatever the case is, Callum Antonadoy, please leave Chelsea Football Club immediately because, yeah, earlier on today, there was a tweet from Fabrizio saying that uh, his links with Lazio is moving, advancing very well. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens here. If there is a you know, bidding war kind of thing between Fulham and Lazio, uh, bottom line, please, Mr. Callum Antonadoy, Quickly find a solution because yeah, your time's up. Uh, all the attacking players that we have right now, you're you're just an afterthought now. You're an afterthought. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Chelsea are now advancing in talks to sign Eli Wahi, and the agreement is getting closer. The Blues plan includes a loan move for Wahi this season, with a view to bringing him to Chelsea. So look, there's a lot of 
hype about this player from French uh, Liga. Um, Chelsea, Chelsea, just out of nowhere. Like, look, I'm not doubting any of the scouting anymore, especially this particular window. We've done, we've done extremely well with with how we've scouted um, some of these young players. So, you know, what's it to say that Eli Wahi is 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 potentially not going to be a very very good striker in the in the future? So, let's see what happens. There is rumors that we want to. Force him to go to Strasbourg. I don't think he's keen to go to Strasbourg, um, but the plan is to get him and then loan him out. So, and, and the loaned um, team at the moment is Strasbourg. So, watch this space. Uh, this is also moving very, very quick that we are going to get Eli Wahi. I don't know too much about Eli Wahi, but apparently um, he's done well last season in French Liga. Let me know in the comment section what you think about Eli Wahi. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, some interesting quote from Poch on Nkunku. For the circumstances in these two games, we used him as a striker. So we've been asking, I mean, what's going on? Well, I really want to see Nkunku behind someone like Nicholas Jackson, who's been absolutely lighting it up. For the circumstances in these two games, we used him as a striker, but he can play number 10, number 8, or on the sides. And I think post-match yesterday, Maurizio Pochettino did say that he does picture and Kunku playing just behind Jackson. And hopefully we see that very soon in these uh, upcoming preseason matches. The remaining matches, next up is Newcastle. I'd love to see that combination being tested over there. But yeah, look, Pochettino saying he could potentially play as an eight. Ten we knew. Um, you know, number eight or on the sides. On the sides we knew he can definitely play as a wing. But as an eight, as a midfielder, um, you know, we've already seen Nkunku drop into midfield and helping out with with the the build up and the and the give and goes that he does with the midfielders i can't see any reason why he cannot play in the midfield but only issue is defensively can he help out from 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 playing in that number 8 role because the number 8 role is box to box uh, generally and and you do need to have some sort of defensive quality of course um but pochettino thinks he can play as an 8 so let's see you know what he has cooking for for Nkunku. Very, very interesting time. Last but not least, wanted to keep this for the last one because this is the best way to end this particular video. Enzo Fernandez via Instagram. Very happy to wear this shirt again. We keep going in the best way. Come on, Chelsea. This guy, he loves Chelsea. He really does, man. His love for Chelsea, I mean, in such a short time, we saw it was probably the one of the very few that was, you know, standing tall last season amidst all the chaos that was happening. And for me, he's a future leader, man. I'm so glad to see him back yesterday in the preseason game. And I want to see him uh, continue on in this preseason and see uh, you know, how he how he goes. Um, but there's a lot of expectation on him in the upcoming season. And I think he's going to deliver as well. He's looking for a huge season. This time now, we have a good team to give him you know, confidence to, to shine, I suppose. So... I love it, man. I love it. This guy, look, uh, this quote, very happy to wear this shirt again. We keep going in the best way. Come on, Chelsea. I love it, man. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know in the comment section how you felt about everything we talked about, especially Michael Olise. Well, the madness that we are doing, man. I, I think Olise, th this is this is probably going to be a here we go. Like the way this is moving, uh, personal terms agreed. And the only thing is just trigger the release clause. Then Crystal Palace really cannot stop us. So I, I love these situations where, you know, they, 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 there's no dramas between transfer, transfer negotiations. Hopefully there's no dramas. Until next time, everyone, smash the like button. Thank you so much for 25,000 subscribers. Really, really appreciate it. We're now flying towards 26,000, uh, if I'm being absolutely honest. So let's get there. And I shall see you guys, promise, tomorrow, definitely live. I know we didn't do a live today, but a whole heap of content was flying around. So I wanted you guys to enjoy all of that live tomorrow 100% where we connect and discuss everything together. Until next time, see ya.